afternoon. It's so good to have you with me again today. And I am excited always to have Pastor Alex Montgomery from uh, Grace Covenant Church up in Hogan's will come and join me. He's a regular. And I know from uh, some of your emails, you really enjoy uh, the word that Brother Alex brings. And so I'm delighted to have you again with me. Your faithfulness is great. And we enjoy you coming down and just pouring into the people. And we love you and appreciate you for, for taking your time. Uh, to, to do that Great and so here. excited to have you today and I know after some conversation before this program <laughs> it's a this is a timely message for not only <laughs> my husband and I personally but I'm hoping for you too I'm sure we all can glean from this today and so mm -hmm. I want you to begin to share what's on your heart today and we'll just go sure. from there yeah Diane great to be here and uh, what's been on my heart just as we turn this year is the number of people that have such a load, a burden, oppressions, depression that is on them. And teaching them to let go, just simply how to let go. And I can't let go of anything unless first I acknowledge that Jesus took it. Mm -hmm. I can't say I let go of fear, I let go of regret, I let go of frustration, I let go of disappointment, I let go of anxiety unless I know of a certainty that Jesus took those very things and that he's left me a promise that I no longer have to let those weight me down because he was weighted down with them. Mm. And uh, one of the scriptures I love that involves this very topic is over in 2 Peter 1. It says, whereby are given to us great and exceeding precious promises whereby these we may be made partakers of divine nature. Isn't that great to know every time I go into the Word, I'm not just getting theology. I'm not just getting facts. I'm not just trying to learn something. I'm partaking of His very nature. Mm. And then after that it says, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust or false desire. And that word escape doesn't mean, wow, now that I'm reading the Bible, I'll never be tempted, I'll never have any pressures, I'll never have any afflictions, uh-uh. It means that when I face them, I can let them go before they take me over. Oh, wow. In other words, it's just like eating. If I were to eat something today and all of a sudden my taste buds would register, there's something bad here, there's something moldy here, there's some poison here. And before I'd let it go down into my system, I would spit it out. Right. Well, Jesus in Mark the seventh chapter said, in a way, our spiritual self is just like that. I can discern there's something in the thoughts that I'm taking, the words that I'm hearing, that I need to let go. Oh, wow. I need to let them out. Because he said, it's not what comes into a man that defiles him. It's what goes into him, becomes a part of him, and then he begins to live that out. But he said, actually in a way, it's kind of odd, <laughs> he, it, he equates the ability of our mind and heart to let go of stuff just like our bowels let go of waste. Yes. He made that same analogy in Mark, Mark the seventh chapter. So he said, when that stuff comes in, you can let it go. You can let your regrets go. You can let your sense of failure go. So going back to the scripture, he said, the great and precious promises, what Christ has done for us in the finished work, gives us the ability to know he has taken that worry so why do I have to worry any longer? He has taken my heartache. He became that heartache for me. He became that anxiety when I just feel like I can't face tomorrow. I can't go through another day. I can realize, whoa, stop, back up. I can let that go because he took what I am now walking through. So thus, why should I walk through it? Why That's should right. I let that weigh me down when he has already taken it? So thus, I can escape, and the word escape is better, translated in 20th century, 21st century English as let go. So I can let go those desires, let go those emotional hurts, let go those frustrations, because I know there's a promise that said he's already taken it. And once I realize that, I can spit it out. I don't have to let it dominate me. It's not that I avoid it, it's not that I deny it, but it is truly that I say, since he has taken my griefs, mm -hmm. he's borne everything that's made me sorrowful. And the, I, I love it when it says in Isaiah 53, the chastisement of our peace. Anything that we've had, what we were talking about here today, anything <laughs> that has stolen our peace, he's taken it. He was chastised with it. So thus, I now can make the great exchange. And I stop for a moment and say, Lord, 
I want to tell you, Jesus, I am feeling weighted down. Mm -hmm. I am feeling oppressed. But Lord, I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to let go of this thing because the great and precious promises says I can let go of this hurt. I can let go of this frustration because you took it. So right now, Lord, I cast this care upon you. Some of you that are hearing us today, you need to cast and let go of that care. But you don't want to stop right there. You want to give it to him, but then make an exchange back from him what he bought and paid for. So if I have a situation that is stealing my peace, I say, Lord, I give you this situation. I turn it over to you. I can't bear it. I can't work with it. I can't fix these people. I can't even fix my own emotions. That's right. I give them to you, but then I don't stop there. I now by faith receive back from you your peace. Because you see, there's an exceeding precious promise. Ephesians second chapter said, he is our peace. Mm -hmm. That's a promise. It says here, that promise ha helps me to escape from that emotion of depression, that emotion of fear, that emotion of just feeling so totally down. I want to pull the covers over my head and not talk to anybody. I said, Lord, I give that to you. Now I realize I can let it go, but I receive back from you your ability, your peace, your rest. I believe, Diane, we Hallelujah. can face every situation totally with the rest of God. We were just saying, I'm working huh? on it. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? And as soon as I think I'm, I'm getting there, something else will come a whole different direction. And that's the thing that, you know, he is seeking constantly uh, how he can devour us. And, Absolutely. And, and if we get victory in one area, Mm -hmm. of our lives and I'm sure there are people out there that feel that way I certainly do at times I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm Lord I've, I've got this right here now you know I've, I've got it figured out Lord and I'm, I'm happy then yes. all of a sudden it'll hit us a totally different way right um, and it could be it, maybe it's a child you know we've got our own personal struggles maybe given to the Lord and received his forgiveness but then mm -hmm. we've got a child that we're we're struggling oh, yes, with we're watching yes. their failures and we want to help them and in it may be an adult child and really you know when you say all you can do is pray that's the most powerful thing we can mm -hmm. do for our children but you know that unless God does something that's right. you know that we've done all we can do and we have to stand on that thing oh and, you're uh, so, so, right. so it's hard sometimes we to, to bring the situation we have to be reminded like you said mm -hmm. and it is in that relationship with the Lord it is in spending time with him every day and it is in getting in that word every day to kind of rebuild us back up because I will get burned out and right. I mean I do read the right. word every day but sometimes I still and I'll have to go back and repent like you said not just read the word not just read it for information That's right. but let it become the balm of Gilead, oh, yeah. let it begin to soothe us and mm -hmm. help us get, because I'm telling you, where we are today in the economy that we're in, oh, boy. The, the world situation, mm -hmm. when we look, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Alex, at, I mean, I was seeing something on, um, on my email the other day at some of the bills that's before Congress about teaching our children uh, alternative lifestyles and things like that that you know, that everything's okay. When I look at the very foundation of this nation, I mean, it's enough. And, and what we need to do is to be, uh, you know, like Daniel and go back and cry out to God and repent right. for the nation. Right. And, I, and he convicted me of that this morning, even I, as I was studying, that I need to repent mm -hmm. for this nation and take the sins of this nation. I've got my own, but to take the sins of this nation and, and repent for what we have done as a nation. Right, you right. know, because it does get heavy, doesn't it? Oh, it gets terribly heavy. And the only way you can get through the heavy is to is go to, back to that. Yeah, back to the great and precious promise. Because if I don't partake of his divine nature, here's the option. I'll partake of my flesh nature and worry and fear and get anxious and get short with people and walk in strife and want to pull away and isolate. Yeah. But you know, the great thing, Diane, is that in every situation, what we discussed here this morning, what you're talking about, there's always a second look. You know, when Jesus was in a place of, of uh, difficulty, right up there on the mount where all the people were coming to him and they didn't have enough food, and uh, what did he do in the situation facing all those people who were hungry and had no provision? He stopped. He looked up. Yeah. He had a second look. All these folks out here hungry. Hey, you haven't gotten to see food. Hey, you're the miracle working God. How come you don't have any food for us? And so rather than getting into the stress of the moment, 
he immediately exchanged it with his father and he looked up. And what did he do? He blessed it. He gave thanks over those loaves and fishes. He got a second look and the miracle came. When I go through every situation that's trying to pull me down, I always need to know what 2 Corinthians 4 says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are mm, unseen. Yes. For the things that are seen are temporal. In other words, they're passing away. We'll forget them in 10 years. Yep. But things that are unseen are eternal. There's always a second look. Dealing with kids, dealing with their problems, having their problems become our problems and we didn't ask for them to. <laughs> That's right. You know, the only way I can do is to stop. I've had times where I will stop. I'll walk into the bathroom, not to go to the bathroom, <laughs> but I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna say, Lord, I let this thing go. I have a little gesture that I do, Diane, and I do it almost every day. It's simple as pie. It's like a first grade kid. And that is I take my hands right here and I say, Lord, here's the challenges I have. I can't handle them. I can't change them. I'm worn out with trying to fix them. I right now take this thing, I unload it off my chest, I give it to you, and I leave it in your hands. And while my hands are up there, it says lift up holy hands without wrath, not mad at that person, not mad at you, not mad at myself. But while I'm up there, Lord, I'm going to receive your ability to walk in wisdom, in peace, and in rest mm. in this situation. Father, I'm making exchange right now. And I'm receiving from you all I need because it says I'm complete in you. Yes. See, that's the great and precious promise. It lets me let go of the problem. And then I come back down and walk the rest of the day in rest. That's a good thing. Yeah. I may do that 10 times a day. Here we go, Lord. Give it to you again. Can't deal with it. Can't handle it. Can't control it. Don't want to control it. Only you can control it because you already bought and paid for it. So now I receive what I can't do from you, which you can do. So now I let you live through me. And uh, over in the thinking in Matthew 13, it talks about that little parable about the man that went and bought the treasure in the field. Mm -hmm. He bought that treasure. But the interesting part of that little one verse parable is it didn't say he gave all he had and just bought the treasure. It says he gave all he had for the treasure but bought the field. I know so many people today that they said, oh, this business I'm going to get into. Oh, this marriage I'm getting into. Oh, this church I'm getting into. Oh, it's a treasure. Man, Pastor, I'm willing to do whatever. I'm going to move to this place in the country. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go get that. Oh, it's a treasure. And I said, hey, bud, don't you forget, there's also going to be a lot of field with that treasure. There's going to be the field of people's opinions. There's going to be the field of tribulation. There's going to be the field of those who will attack you. Yeah, the treasure may be there. Hey, let's face it, in a marriage, oh, I want to marry this gal. Oh, I want to marry this guy. Oh, he's a treasure. Oh, she's a treasure. Yeah, after a couple of years, uh, Pastor, I want to come back in for a little counseling. We, we found some field in our relationship. We found some areas we don't get along in. We found that we don't agree on money. We found that we don't agree on how to raise the kids. We found that we don't agree on how to deal with the in-laws. I said, is she still a treasure? Oh, uh, yeah. I said, when you get the treasure, you get the field with it. You've got to let go of the things in the field that tend to tell you that she or this or that church or this pastor is not a treasure because the field will try to tell you, I'll dump the treasure. It ain't worth it. No, we let go of the things that are in the field. Matter of fact, God uses those things in our field, the challenges, the difficulties, the frustrations, to teach us, to hone us, to show that in myself I am weak. I can't do it. What's that make me do? Makes God necessary. Absolutely. I have to do more of the, here we go, Lord. And then it lets me realize, you know what? That church I'm in is a treasure. Hey, you know that friend that we, we don't get along? I know she's a treasure. I know he's a treasure. They're great folks. And, you know, we've just had a big argument. But I let that thing go, Lord. I let the field go so I can see the greatness of the treasure. That's true in any part of our lives. Mm, that's and th powerful. That's where over in 2 Corinthians 5 it says, Henceforth, I know no man by their flesh their history, their background, how they act, what they do, what they agree with me or don't agree. I don't care if we had the biggest fight in the world 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago. I can let it go because it says right there in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, henceforth, I don't know you. Second look, I don't see you by how you just yelled at me. I don't see you by how you just disagreed with me. I don't see you by how you just told somebody else I was this, that, and the other. I right now don't see you by the flesh so I can let go the things that I've done to hurt you. And by the way, brother, 
I want to tell you I'm sorry for the things I have done towards you. I'm believing in Jesus' name there's a grace for you to let go because I'm sorry. I repent of those things I said about you. Having enough guts to come to that person and say, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You see, we have the ability to let go the things that have been done to us and also to encourage others to let go of the things we've done to them. We let go of it by repenting, by dealing with it, by facing that situation with honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. So if I don't see that person in the eyes uh, that my flesh sees them, I see them in the eyes of God, so I don't see them by their flesh. I don't see them by their opinions. The next verse says, if any man, it says therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? It connects the verse 17 to 16. It says, therefore, since I don't know them by the flesh, I can let go all their little hurts they've given me. Now it says, if any man's in Christ, he's a new, new creature. creature. Old things have passed away. What was the context? The old things of the hurts and the disappointments and the things that others have done to me. I no longer see them by the first look. I see them by the second look. He gives me the ability to let it go. At Christmas, I went up to visit my people in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I went up there and was part of a, of an old concert choir I sang with 40 years ago. Oh, I bet that was interesting. It was it? fun. Was it it fun? was great. Got to sing with a choir and an orchestra and all. It was, it was a great time. But um, I got to see some relatives I hadn't seen for a long time. My own sister. She gets in the car with me, comes to the concert. Oh, enjoyed it. It was so good. Immediately starts into everything negative about my family not my personal, not my wife and my kids, but our extended family, and about our town, and about where my business my dad used to have. I mean, I'm in the car for 15 minutes, and she gives me every negative thing. I'm getting so weighted down. I'm, I'm in the car sitting down, and I'm just wanting to go down and see. And I said, I can't stand this. And the Lord brings this to me. You just preached to your church about letting go. You just said, henceforth, I don't know any man by their flesh. So if I don't know him by their flesh, why am I letting her flesh get to my flesh? So I, I turned while she was telling me all this, nyan, 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 and I just looked out the window and I said, Lord, I'll let it go. Lord, I'll let it go. And I turned back to her and I, and I listened and I was able to be intent and I wasn't gripping the seat and angry and mad saying, why does she have to be so negative? Why does she have to be so hateful? Why does she have to be so depressed all the time? I received her. When I can let go the other person's faux pas, I don't care how bad they hurt me or irritate me. When I let it go because Jesus has taken that frustration from 2 Corinthians 5, I now could receive my sister. It was like, you can go ahead and complain if you want, still love you. Because unconditional love is just what it says, no condition. I love you if you totally disagree with me about your lifestyle, about politics, about the church, about God. I will listen to you. I don't have to agree with you but I receive you because I can let go all the things that have in the past made me want to just give you a fist sandwich. Now, <laughs> that's in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. So the letting go lets me live life on a level basis. It no longer has to be up and down and all around. The minute there's a frustration, boom, it's just like a reflex, I let it go. I let it go. Jesus, you already took this. Why am I getting frustrated? I got a second look. I no longer have to see them by their flesh anymore. When Jesus appeared, Diane, in the upper room in John the 20th chapter, his first appearance after his resurrection, he gave the disciples the power to let go. Here's what he said to them. First thing he said twice, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Because they were so scared they thought he was a spirit. They thought he was a, a ghost or something. They didn't realize until Thomas touched him that that is their Lord, that is Jesus. But right after that, he says a most unusual thing. He says, whoever sins you retain, they're retained. Whoever sins you remit or let go, they're let go. I give you the authority to let go of things that come to you. If you want, you can retain them. I give you the authority. If you don't want to, you can let them go. I give you the authority to let go demon spirits that are on people. You can let go of situations. I, I believe a lot of times, Dan, we can speak over situations where people are in strife or in bitterness. I've seen church splits before. When I say, Lord, just let them let go of their animosity towards one another. I believe that's a valid prayer mm -hmm. because he's given us that power. But specifically, he says, you can let go of their sins. 
There's nobody that... And explain that when you say, I can let go of their sins. Help well, me it doesn't mean I forgive them their sins. Only Jesus did that. Right. But I'm saying if I've been sinned against and somebody's hurt me, somebody's talked behind my back, somebody has in some way defrauded me, I now have the authority gotcha. of the breath of God. You know what he did? He says he breathed on them. Mm-hmm. And as he breathed on him, he says, I'll give you the power to let go that hurt. I give you the power now to forgive. I give you the power to release. And then if I see other people over here fighting, I can't say that I can make them do something. But you know what? I can start praying, Lord, give them the grace to let go. That marriage is about to fall apart. Lord, I give them the grace to let that go. The things they're disagreeing on are so tiny and minuscule in the light of eternity. Lord, help them to let go of their awe. Help them to let go of these differences. Help them to let go of that finger of accusation. Mm -hmm. And then with anybody that's done that to me, I can look at them and smile even though they've hurt me and defrauded me. I'm sitting there listening to my sister just down all these people. And I'm thinking, I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. And you know what was rolling through that car? (laughs) The breath of the Lord. The Holy Spirit's breath. Because Jesus said he breathed on them. You think she knew it? Huh? Do you think she was ever aware of that? I don't know. She saw the change on my face. And because I turned and looked out that window and I just said under my breath, I'll let this go in Jesus' name. <laughs> and then in my mind, I'm thinking, Holy Spirit breathed on me. What happened in the upper room? There was a rushing mighty wind. wind. Yeah. Jesus first had the wind. He breathed his own breath on him. And he says, now you can remit those things that have come to you. You don't have to get anxious anymore. You don't have to say, I'll get back at them. I'll have them. Or I ain't talking to them anymore. All that stuff, all that anger, all that bitterness. You know, you come into the house and you've got three or four children. Some of you young folks out there that got kids. And uh, you come to the house and you've had a busy day at work and you're feeling frustrated from your work, but you come in and the kids want you and you've got to go to the soccer game. You know, but before you walk out the door, you can stop for a second and make an exchange. Say, Lord, I let go of this frustration. Yes, I'm physically tired. Yes, I'm worn out. But my emotions are not going to rule me today. I let go the right to have to act according to what I feel. Mm. I act according to this word. The great and precious promises, what's it say? I escape these things. I don't have to let them rule me. Let's hear the wind of the Spirit come pouring in. And when it does, I can remit the frustrations of the day. The guys at work, if you're a school teacher, the things you had to deal with, boom, you let them go. Wow, that's powerful. But we got a purpose to do it. Oh, amen. Because you know what our purpose is, Diane? I want the world to see Jesus amen. in me. Yes. I want the world to see Christ. And what they're looking for is our consistency. What we were saying before from James 1, in your patience possess you your soul. Let patience have her perfect work. I say, Lord, let it come on. People that disagree with me, people get upset with me, people that don't like me, bring it on. Let patience have her perfect work that we may be perfect and entire. And I love the last part wanting nothing. That means I don't I don't have to look to you, friend, as life. Oh, you don't like me? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my brother-in-law doesn't like me. Oh, no. I mean, and then you become a people pleaser trying to make people like you. But when you want nothing, you realize I am, Colossians 2, complete in him. Father, now I realize you've taken my incompleteness. You've taken this argument we had. I don't have to walk through my life, as we say from my home state of Kentucky, bent out of shape Mm -hmm. because I can let it go. Mm -hmm. I can let it go. Wow. So, anyway. We need to put those things behind and let it go. Count it all joy Mm -hmm. when you fall into trials, temptations, death. Is that because I'm saying, oh, God, thank you for putting this on me? No, I believe it's part of a fallen world. But Jesus uses the fallen world to give us what Romans 5 said. Tribulation works patience, experience, proven character, and the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We don't lose hope. So thus, in the middle of that, I can lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Said, Lord, I've gone through the toughest situation. I had a guy in our church that just said last week that he had a family member that hurt him with some things so bad. He's on up in his 60s, and he said, I was literally stabbed in the back by some family members. He said, I was wounded. I was under it. He said, then he took his little dog out to walk, and while he was walking, the Lord spoke to him and says, let it go. Let this thing go, and I will take over. You quit trying to control it. You let me have it. 
Amen. And that's what Amen. we're going to do today. Count it all, Joy. Yes. We have about two minutes left, so I want you to close this out. I never like to close it without extending an opportunity. This could be your year to let Jesus Christ be everything he wants to be in your life. And so I'd like you to lead us here quickly in Amen. prayer. Father, I thank you today that you have taken on yourself all the things that we get so weighted down with. You've taken our sins, the penalty of our sins, the power of that sin. You've taken all the things that our flesh would sometimes do to try to react to the world rather than respond to the word. So Lord, right now, if there's one who does not know you, who's letting the things of the world rule them and dominate them, I thank you that if they're not born again, they can say yes to Jesus right now, and you will take yes. all their cares, all their frustrations. Doesn't mean that things will be perfect. You said in the world we'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. Yes. I have taken all those things in the world, so you don't have to take them. So Lord, if they don't know you, know you, thank you. They receive yes. you right now. And if they do know you, thank you that they cast those cares, they make the great exchange, they let go of their disappointments, and they can walk through this day and through this year with the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. I pray that and believe that for these folks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming. It's great to be I, here. I am excited about 2012. Amen. I think as a as Christians, we've got a lot of things to do. If you haven't seen War Horse, I'm not a, a proponent of telling people to go to yes, the movies. Go great. to that. The Lord moved on me during that movie because we are war horses. And we need to be ready to be whatever in every situation Amen. in life. What that horse was to those people throughout the movie. He, was, he became something different for every owner that had him. And we need to be that for Amen. every yeah. person. And be willing to work for the Lord in every situation that we find ourselves in. So Good get work. your hands uh, to the plow and work for the Lord. Remember, you make the difference. Because Christ in you truly is the hope of glory. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Thank you.